without any further ado let's get started in this particular session we are going to talk about dr b r ambedkar and we are also going to talk about the role that he has played in the uh, drafting of the constitution of india we'll be talking about all these things um, so in the first part which is going to be conducted right now we will talk about uh, the contribution of uh, b r ambedkar not only in the you know constitution wise but his social and political contributions as well okay so here you may come across multiple questions that can be formed and asked in the ugc net examination right so i would like you all to pay very close attention especially to the organizations and the newspapers that were started by uh, b r ambedkar ji theek hai to aap sabhi ko bahut theek tarike se isko yaad rakhna hai और ये करना है उसके ऊपर चिंतन करना है ठीक है आपको वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रहेगा आपके लिए विदाउट एनी फर्दर आई डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट लेट मी यू नो टॉक अबाउट माई यूट्यूब एंड एप्लीकेशन प्लान एज यू ऑल नो संडे टू थर्सडे ये दिन होते हैं जब मैं यूट्यूब लाइव लेता हूँ सिक्स पी एम आज का एक यूट्यूब लाइव का जो ये है ये 2 पी को हो रहा है बिकॉज वी हैव अ वर्कशॉप एट 6 पी एम बाई द वे प्लीज अटेंड दैट वर्कशॉप एज वेल वेर एन आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ टू क्रैक द जे आर एफ ओके हाउ टू गेट द जे आर एफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली आर द थिंग्स दैट यू शुड डू अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू नो वी हैव अ कनेक्टिंग सेशन एट बेज एग्जाम प्रेप एट नाइन पी एम विच इज यूजली द कनेक्टिंग सेशन ऑफ यूट्यूब लाइव तो यहाँ पे हम लोग बी आर अम्बेडकर डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर एंड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया पार्ट वन देख रहे हैं इसी का पार्ट टू जो होगा वो आज रात हम लोग 9 पीएम को देखने वाले हैं ठीक है सो इन फर्स्ट पार्ट आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द पर्सनैलिटी दैट डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर वॉज इन द सेकेंड पार्ट आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दैट हीज प्रिपेयर एंड वी विल बी ऑल्सो फोकसिंग ऑन सम ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और सेलेंट फीचर्स ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एज वी कॉल इट राइट so in this part we'll talk about the creator in the next part we'll talk about the uh, creation okay that's what i have planned if you have not um, downloaded badges exam prep application please do so by uh, scanning the qr code that is being displayed on your screen apart from that please note that we also provide one on one free counseling to every student right so please please you know uh, if you have any doubt you can call on the number given on the screen apart from that a very very important announcement we still have holy sale going on this is the last day i repeat 26th of march is the last day where you can avail flat 60% off on any classroom programs that are being offered by badges exam prep i personally think that this is a fantastic opportunity and you should not miss on this right so those who are on the fence jo jisne abhi tak nahi liya hai paid subscription उनसे मैं विनती करना चाहूंगा कि प्लीज ले लीजिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट साबित होने वाला है ना बल्कि आपके जून 2024 के अटेम के लिए बल्कि उन लोगों के लिए जो अभी इस प्रवाह में पहली बार आए हैं और सोच रहे हैं कि दिसंबर 2024 में अटेम देंगे दोनों के लिए ही ये बहुत ही सुनहरा मौका है तो प्लीज आप होली सेल का जरूर फायदा उठाए ठीक है तो विदाउट एनी फर्दर आई डो नाउ लेट स्टार्ट so you know as you all know because we are discussing one of the most important personalities um, in india struggle for independence and post independence as well we have to obviously start with the personal biography of the person so dr b r ambedkar he actually was born in madhya pradesh and the name of the town where he was born is a garrison or military cantonment town the name of the town is mahu theek hai which is very close to indore it is around 20 to 25 kilometers from indore right and it's a uh, comparatively you know comparatively a bigger city today right but it's a cantonment city it was a cantonment that was erected by the british why was he born over there because his father ramji maloji sakpal was actually a subedar in the british royal army or british army as we call it he was born on 14th of april 1891 and he was the 14th child and the uh, you know last child of ramji maloji sakpal right Uh, Ramji Maloji Sakpal was a very well-read man, even though he belonged to the so-called untouchable caste of Mahar, right? And he was also the follower of Saint Kabir. So, as you can, you know, you can see already how the socio-religious reform movements, uh, uh, and uh, before that, uh, the kind of bhakti movement that we had 
have changed uh, the modern India. How it has, you know, uh, uh, what do we say, has a lasting impact on how we lead our life even today. Here you can see that the father of one of the greatest freedom fighters and one of the greatest uh, crusaders for the equality in Indian society, इनके पिताजी खुद संत कबीर के भक्त रहे हैं तो आप सोच सकते हैं कि बचपन से ही इनके आ, मतलब इनके ऊपर किस तरह के संस्कार हुए होंगे डॉक्टर बी आर अम्बेडकर के ऊपर और इसके ही वजह से क्योंकि हम संत कबीर को पूरी तरह से ऐसे साइंटिफिक सेंट तो नहीं मान सकते राइट बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली द पीरियड इन विच ही एग्जिस्टेड वॉज मिडीवल बट द काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चंस दैट ही आस्क थ्रू हिज दो बीजक में जिस तरह से उन्होंने लिखा है जिस तरह से उन्होंने दोनों धर्मों के ऊपर स्पेशली हिंदूज एंड मुसलमान सो हिंदुइज्म एंड इस्लाम दोनों के ऊपर सवाल खड़े किए हैं ये जो एक साइंटिफिक इंक्वायरी होती है स्पिरिट ऑफ इंक्वायरी जिसे हम कहते हैं ये संत कबीर में हमें दिखती है वही जो आचार विचार है वो डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आम्बेडकर के पिताजी ने उनके ऊपर जरूर किए होंगे बचपन से ही राइट ही लॉस्ट हिज मदर वेन ही वॉज ओनली सिक्स राइट सो ही वॉज बेसिकली आफ्टर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम रेज बाई हिज ओन डैड राइट एज फार एज हिज एजुकेशन इज कंसर्न um he was educated in bombay because right after he was born within two or three years his father retired from the army and that's when they shifted back to bombay so bombay mein unki schooling hui hai aur early college bhi hua hai to elphinstone college jo hai mumbai ka wahan pe unhone bachelor's ki degree li thi yahan pe jab wo schooling kar rahe the bombay mein tab unki sabse pehle untouchability ke sath inka sabse pehle mukabla hua because he belonged to the so called lower caste the name of which is mahar he was not allowed to you know uh, enter the classroom and uh, uh, sit uh, along with his classmates who belonged to the so called upper caste right uh, he was not allowed to drink water from the same uh, pot there was no uh, uh, this thing what do we say uh, mingling that was happening between the students uh, of different castes especially the so called lower caste kids they used to be kept away from the so called higher caste kids this social segregation dr ambedkar was appalled by it he was appalled by it he just couldn't understand uh, you know one of the questions that he asked is uh, you know uh, because he was a mahar by caste the the local barber at his village would not cut his hair because you know chhu nahi sakte chua chut ka khel hai ye sab ठीक है तो छू नहीं सकते एंड देन ही सॉ द बार्बर एक्चुअली यू नो कटिंग द हेयर हेयर फ्रॉम बफेलो तो आप सभी को पता होगा बफेलो के uh, पूरे शरीर के ऊपर बाल होते हैं और वो बाल जो है वो उसको निकालना पड़ता है एंड ही सॉ बार्बर परफॉर्मिंग दैट बट ही स्टिल रिफ्यूज टू कट द हेयर ऑफ अमन बींग एंड ही वॉज आस्किंग दिस क्वेश्चन हाउ इज दिस इवन पॉसिबल and for a child who was around 7 or 8 years old at you know at that point of time that was one question that he could never get answer to when he was a child obviously when he you know entered college and uh, when he was uh, you know a, you know when he became uh, when he came of age he understood that there is something which is called as caste system and we belong to a particular caste which is considered lower caste in this hindu hierarchy because of which we are meted out with such a treatment imagine the kind of uh, impact this particular incident must have had on the mind of a young tender you know dr baba saheb ambedkar wherein the barber is ready to perform something for an for an animal but not for a human being with great difficulties and with a lot of uh, social abuse you know uh, that he might have to face uh, he completed his bachelor's from elphinstone college which is in bombay this is one of the best colleges in india to even today okay um, now he completed his bachelor's on the scholarship that was provided to him by his highness sayajira gaikwad of baroda sayajira gaikwad of baroda was a great social reformer and he believed in you know the abilities of dr b r ambedkar he was of the opinion that you know he should take some education and after that 
he should join the services of Baroda, the princely states of Baroda. He chose Dr. B. R. Ambedkar to, you know, attend uh, uh, University of Columbia in USA, where he would complete his master's and PhD. So after 1913, Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar was actually on an educational achievement spree. He completed multiple courses, right? But later on, in, by 1920s, he was back in India. Because he wanted to, you know, work for the Indians. He wanted to work for the untouchables. And it was also the bond that he had signed with uh, the Maharaj of Baroda, Sayajirao Gaikwad, that he will come back and serve the princely state of Baroda. So there were multiple reasons why he came back. Once he came back in the 1920, the first thing that he did was he came up with a newspaper called Mook Nayak. Mook Nayak is a paper, a newspaper in which he tried to highlight the conditions of the so-called depressed classes, the so-called, uh, you know, lower castes of India. Mook Nayak simply means the hero of those who cannot speak. Mook is the one who cannot speak, the, the one who is dumb. So the hero of those who are dumb. Because he considered uh, the so-called lower caste people of India to be the ones who are never heard uh, in, in the larger political scenario that exists in India. Further, we will also discuss his political views, but this is one of the most important ones, wherein he considered that, you know, he is not being, uh, his caste is not being heard, right? Later on, he came up with a sabha which is called as Bahishkrut Hitakarani Sabha in 1924, wherein he first gave the message, educate, organize and agitate. In Marathi, actually, he gave this uh, uh, message. He said, Shika Sangatit Vaha Ani Sangarshaka. That's what he said in Marathi. Shika Sangatit Vaha Ani Sangarshaka. So, seek ho, organize ho jau, Sangatit ho jau, or Sangarsh karo. That's what he said in Hindi. Okay, so he gave this particular message, which is quite popular even today, right? In the September of 1924, he came up with a new, you know, uh, party or no, not party, but a new organization. This, this is actually an association, Samta Sainik Dal. And this was, you know, uh, again for the uh, establishment of equality in the society. So the P, uh, so it was called in English as Army of Soldiers for Equality or party of the fighters for equality. So this particular uh, uh, association, Samta Sainik Dal. So Samta is equality, Sainik is soldier and Dal obviously is a party. Okay, so this particular party or this particular association aimed at establishing uh, equality in India. In 1935, in a provisional conference of the depressed classes held in Yavla in Nashik district of Maharashtra, he gave the shock of their lives to the so-called caste, uh, you know, people of India, the caste Hindus. Caste Hindus means upper caste Hindus, the so-called upper caste Hindus. He gave the shock of their lives to them by, you know, declaring that uh, I was born in Hinduism, but I will not die as a Hindu. I Hindu Hindu I will not die as a Hindu. 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 That's what he uh, you know, proclaimed in this particular conference. And that's how 13th of October 1935 becomes quite important from your examination point of view. This could be asked as a separate question in the UGC net examination. Okay. However, he did not act on it immediately. It took around 21 years for him to actually complete what he has said over here. Okay. But next up, what happened? In 1936, he addressed the Bombay Presidency Mahar Conference. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So it was the conference of the Mahar community, the so-called lower caste people. And here he advocated once again in 1936, uh, the renunciation of Hinduism. He said that the Mahars are considered to be a backward caste because they still, you know, are a part of the Hindu hierarchy. If they, you know, uh, just uh, uh, throw the yoke of Hinduism, their social position would be, uh, uh, that their social position would improve automatically. That was the first thing that he said. So, so he said renunciation of Hinduism is perhaps the most important thing that you can do, right? 
1936, that's what he did. And then again in 1936, he also formed the Independent Labour Party. Now, this particular party was formed for the welfare of the workers or the labourers. Now, you might say, ki, why again, you know, all of a sudden, labourers or workers, why the issues of labourers or workers is being, are, are being taken up by Dr. Baba Sabam Bidkar? The reason is because he understood and he already knew that most of the workers and laborers that we have in India, they come from the so-called lower castes. See, he said that economic, political and social backwardness, they are all linked together. So if you're talking about, say, a particular caste uh, being uh, backward, then he said that their economic status would also be backward and their political um, uh, this thing uh, participation would also be very negligible in number so that's what his opinion was so he said that uh, socio economic and political freedom they should go hand in hand even if we miss out on a single type of freedom we miss out on the entire goal itself this was one of the biggest point on which he criticized Indian National Congress we'll come to that in a bit again what happened in 1942? He was appointed to the Executive Council of the Governor General of India as Labour Member. Again, he was, you know, Labour Member in 1942 to the Executive Council of the Governor General of India. Very important and very um, high post, you know, when it comes to the power and, and the prestige that was attached to this particular post. On this particular uh, page, you can see I have included the logo of uh, the paper that he had come out with, Bhaiskrut Bharat in 1924 this is the logo of that particular paper right on the last page obviously it was the portrait of dr baba Saheb Ambedkar. now next up again what did he do what was his social and political work in 1946 he was elected to the constituent assembly from bengal see in um, uh, uh, this thing uh, when we talk about uh, his uh, inclusion in the constituent assembly it's quite important because he was the one who drafted the constitution for us, right? So the constitution that we use today was uh, gifted by Dr. Baba Sabambedkar to all of us. So uh, this particular uh, fact also becomes important, can be asked in the examination. At the same time, in around 1946, he also published a very important book, Who Were Shudras? Shudra Koon Hote in Marathi. Shudra Koon Hote. Okay, that's what the title of this particular book was, Who Were Shudras or Shudra Konuti in Marathi. After the independence in 1947, he was appointed as a Minister of Law and Justice in Nehru's first cabinet. So he was the, uh, uh, this thing, Minister of Law and Justice. So there is this ministry called Ministry of Law and Justice of which he was the minister under Jawaharlal Nehru. Now, uh, the inclusion of uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar in the Constituent Assembly is quite important. Because Jawaharlal Nehru was not really very enthusiastic uh, to start off with, but it was Doctor, uh, it was uh, Mahatma Gandhi ji whose insistence actually brought uh, Doctor Baba Sahib Ambedkar in the assembly. Okay, after 21 years, um, on 14th of October 1956, he embraced Buddhism, thus giving effect to the words that he had spoken in the Yavla Conference in 1935. So, Yavala Conference, October 1935, he had said that uh, That's what he said in Marathi. Right? So, uh, I was born a Hindu, but I will not die as a Hindu. Whatever that he said in 1935, he was giving effect to it. Because in Nagpur, in uh, 1956, October 1956, he actually became a Buddhist monk. He was confirmed, uh, conferred the title of Bodhisattva by the Buddhist monks at Jagtik Buddhism Council in 1954 in Kathmandu, Nepal. And one of the most special thing about this is that he was given the status of Bodhisattva while he was alive. Very few have been given this particular title when they are alive. He was given this particular title when he was alive. So this could also be asked in the exam as a separate question. Uh, once again, uh, just a bit, uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, uh, ask if my voice and video is clear to you all. Okay, just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat box. That would be really great. Next up, uh, he obviously attained Mahaparinirvana, that is the death 
on 6th of December 1956 and he was confer conferred the Bharat Ratna posthumously in 1990. So Bharat Ratna is the highest civilian award that we have in India and it was conferred upon him in 1990s. There has been the demand for it since 1956 itself. Uh, immediately after the death, you know, uh, uh, this particular demand had come up, right? Um, after him, a very particular salutation has become, uh, you know, uh, quite famous, especially amongst the people who belong to the uh, lower castes, and that is Jai Bhim. This has been used by the lower, uh, so-called lower caste uh, people, uh, the Dalit community of India, uh, quite liberally, right? So uh, that's one title uh, that uh, is is uh, you know quite famous. Okay. It is still uh, used very uh, uh, prominently, not only in Maharashtra, but all over uh, the world today, I would say. Not only India, not only Maharashtra, all over the world too, it is used. Okay. Now, uh, views of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar on independence, they are quite important. This is where we will be talking about how he criticized, you know, um, uh, INC. So, uh, obviously, the India struggle for independence, it had a background of socio-religious reform movements. Um, uh, it also had a background, somewhat background, you know, the background of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar itself comes from Bhakti movement because his father was a great follower of uh, Saint Kabir. So, medieval Bhakti movement, then in the modern times, the socio-religious reform movements that started in the 18th and the 19th century, right? And he had a huge impact. Uh, on him uh, of of uh, Mahatma Phule, Mahatma Jyoti Rao Phule. So the kind of uh, socio uh, religious reform movement that was started by Mahatma Phule and his wife Savitri Bai Phule that had a huge impact uh, on on uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Uh, when the socio religious reform movements took place later on, uh, slowly there was a rise of nationalism in India and Indians started talking about this concept of Swarajya. The concept of Swaraj was included as an official program of Congress in 1906, Calcutta session. It was done under the presidentship and under the guidance of Dada Bhai Nauroji in 1906. However, in 1929 Lahore Congress session, the demand changed from Swaraj to Sampurna Swaraj or Purna Swaraj or as, as we call it in English, complete independence, right? However, uh, you know, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar actually criticized this view of Congress that, you know, we are fighting for the political independence. Because I just now mentioned, see, when we talk about independence for Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, there were three types of independence or freedoms that one should achieve uh, in order to live a completely liberated and um, completely, uh, what do we say, life to its full potential. And that is the socio-economic and political freedom. He always criticized Congress saying that they are only talking about the political freedom because they do not care about the socio-economic freedom because most of the people who formed Congress back then belonged to the so-called upper caste and upper class of India. So they did not come across any socio or economic uh, uh, problems per se. Most of them had, you know, uh, estates and estates and uh, lots of money. Most of them were actually quite rich. Mahatma Gandhi obviously was very rich. Jawaharlal Nehru obviously was very rich. There were only a few like, you know, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar or Sardar Vallabhai Patel who actually came from very humble background. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, though he belonged to a very uh, dominant community from Gujarat, he was a uh, son of, uh, uh, you know, he was a farmer per se. Like his family was actually predominantly an agriculturist family. So there were very few uh, leaders in the in India struggle for independence who had seen the life as it must have been experienced by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So obviously he was pro-Dalit and he said that socio-economic and political freedom all must go hand in hand. Co Congress is only targeting political freedom and that's not the way to go. And that's why he criticized uh, Indian National Congress's politics. He obviously also was involved in certain political activities uh, to provide uh, uh, equal status or equality to the so-called Dalit people of India, um, uh, like Ch the Chaudar Tale Satyagraha of Mahar, which is in Raigad district of Maharashtra. This happened in March 1927, wherein a public uh, talab, jo hota hai, a lake, 
uh, public lake uh, was there in Mahad, which is in Raigad district of Maharashtra. And the Dalit community was not allowed to drink water or fetch water out of it. So he actually conducted a uh, Satyagraha over there. And obviously later on, uh, the Dalit community also got the right to use the water. Right? Kalaram Mandir Satyagraha, again, uh, March 1930. Kalaram Mandir is situated in Nashik, uh, Maharashtra again. And that's where he, uh, you know, uh, started his Satyagraha, wherein he wanted the Dalit community to have the right to enter the temple. Okay, so there are two temples which are very close uh, in Nashik, Kala Ram Mandir and Gora Ram Mandir. Kala Ram is Black Ram, Gora Ram is Fair Ram. Okay, so the Murti of Rama, the icon of Rama inside, the image of Rama to be exact, is actually made out of two different stones, because of which it is called as Kala Ram and Gora Ram. Okay, so out of this, Kala Ram Mandir is actually really very famous, uh, and that's where he actually conducted his Satyagraha. I think Amir Khan's movie PK, it was shot in this particular uh, temple, I suppose. Yeah. Or at least Amir Khan actually visited this particular temple of Nashik. Okay. Uh, the second round table in, in the recent past, this is something that I remember of the Kalaram temple and there was some controversy also regarding Amir Khan visiting this particular temple. Fine. Uh, going ahead, uh, the second round table conference is quite important when it comes to um, this thing. Uh, the uh, the kind of role that he had played because in the second roundtable conference which was conducted in 1931 he was aiming for separate electorate for the backward classes which was heavily criticized by Gandhi and as you all know Gandhi came back empty-handed after the second roundtable conference and relaunched the civil disobedience movement but the demand for the separate electorates for the backward classes was still going on and after returning from London um, Baba Sam, uh, Gandhi obviously again was put in jail and he was in Pune, right? He was uh, put in jail in Pune in uh, Yarwada Karagruha as we call it, Yarwada jail. That's where Gandhi was and that's where uh, Dr. Baba Sam Ambedkar came and met him. So this particular photo that you can see on your screen is when Dr. B.R. Ambedkar came and met, Dr., uh, met Mahatma Gandhi in the Yarwada jail and that's where they signed Pune Pact in September 1932. What was this pact? Here, both, you know, actually, you know, gave up on their stubbornness. Mahatma Gandhi gave up on the stubbornness. Um, and, and even uh, B.R. Ambedkar also gave up on his stubbornness. Because see, Mahatma Gandhi was on, was on fast unto death. Unless and until this demand uh, by the uh, so-called uh, leaders of the backward classes, especially Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, for separate electorates, uh, you know, is, is uh, completely uh, given up. He was on fast unto death. So, uh, Gandhi was quite, kind of weak by, uh, by you know, uh, by the time Dr. B.R. Ambedkar came and met him. And he asked him multiple times, do you really want me to live or not? Okay. And uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar, uh, even though he had his own differences with Mahatma Gandhi, he respected Gandhi a lot. And he said, no, I would not like you to die. Because the kind of work that you are doing, okay, sound is not clear. Is that so? Is that so for everyone else? Please uh, give me a uh, thumbs up if you can hear me properly because uh, Shauraj Jo Roy is, is saying that the sound is not clear. Sudeep ji, Kwanji ji, Rupa Shaw ji, please uh, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me properly yes please okay so sound is clear right so shauraj ji uh, kindly you know check your internet connectivity uh, because even i think right now my internet connection is working fine going ahead so um, when they met they actually you know uh, met each other halfway so first of all uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar gave up his uh, demand for separate electorate. But when he gave up that particular demand, he, you know, needed something, a kind of security for the, uh, the Dalits of India. So, Mahatma Gandhi told him that we will have something which is called as a reserved seat uh, scheme. Separate electorate was actually a very uh, evil device that was uh, used by the British. So that they can, you know, uh, field one community against the other. That was something that they had come up with after the revolt of 1857. 
after the revolt of 1857 british had decided that the only way we can rule this country is by divide and rule policy so to pitch one community against another they came up with this very evil device of separate electorate wherein the muslims would be given separate electorate dalits will be given separate electorate anglo indians will be given separate electorate sikhs will be given separate electorate so on and so forth and those who are getting the separate electorate they would be really happy with it obviously because they are getting special attention what is separate electorate see within a within a particular constituency the candidate of a particular religion or particular community will be able to stand up no one else will be able to stand up for the election and not only this this is okay not only this the people who belong to that particular community only will be able to you know uh, vote for him or or you know people who are standing from different parties but they belong to that particular community so this was a mockery of the universal adult franchise actually so gandhi said you know let's go ahead with the reservation wherein you will get the first part of it certain seats would be reserved for the community dalit community but everyone will be able to vote so obviously uh, what uh, you know gandhi had proposed was accepted by uh, dr b r ambedkar and that's how the pune pact of uh, september 1932 was signed between the two right um, obviously he uh, played a huge role in the constituent assembly he was the chairman of the drafting com uh, commission or uh, drafting committee uh, included in the constituent assembly on the insistence of mahatma gandhi because mahatma gandhi said that once india has achieved independence it is india which has achieved independence it is not the indian national congress that has achieved independence so just because you have electoral uh what do we say uh, majority just because indian national congress the inc enjoys electoral majority does not mean you alone are there okay there are other people as well one one such personality was obviously um, uh, for him it was uh, dr b r ambedkar and he said that you know again i am i am uh, again i am i am you know saying uh, he mahatma gandhi said that uh, you know the independence was won not by indian national congress but by india and hence others who are not part of the congress should also be a part of your uh, constituent assembly and constitution making they should be made a part of it apart from that mahatma gandhi who was a fellow lawyer he was a barrister was a great admirer of dr b r ambedkar apart from that see uh, even jawaharlal nehru was an admirer of uh, b r ambedkar and he knew the kind of work that bhr ambedkar is doing for the social justice of the dalits so they had healthy respect for each other but it was on the insistence of mahatma gandhi that jawaharlal nehru included dr bhr ambedkar in the uh, constituent assembly okay he became the first minister of law and justice in 1952 obviously he played a huge part in the drafting of the indian constitution about which we'll talk in the second part theek hai he resigned on the issues from his post such as the kashmir issue uh, indian for foreign policy and nehru's policy towards hindu code bill so let's talk about the last first hindu code bill so uh, dr b r ambedkar had taken a very staunch and stubborn stance that we should have a uniform civil code uh, you know uh, uh, within which all the communities will have to follow the hindu communities will have to follow certain rules as against this a stubborn and very staunch stand that was taken by dr b r ambedkar nehru was of the opinion that this will actually create bigger problems for us in the short run so we what we have to do is we have to remain a little lenient towards impli uh, towards imposing hindu code bill this was not acceptable to dr b r ambedkar apart from that the the nam the non alignment movement that was started and the panchashil agreement that was you know being uh, 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 you know furthered by pandit nehru at that point of time you know the formulation of uh, indian foreign policy especially the nam non alignment movement that was formulated by nehru that was not uh, really you know uh, the kind of uh, you know that was not the cup of tea for dr b r ambedkar he was of the opinion that we should have a much more concrete foreign policy 
it shouldn't be based on negativity it shouldn't be based you know something that starts with non you know it shouldn't be that it should be positive in aspect okay so this non alignment movement uh, that india was following at that point of time under the leadership of the prime minister nehru that was not acceptable to him the kashmir issue again you know uh, the uh, opinion of dr b r ambedkar on it is not really known it is not really known uh, but what we can say is that they had differences of opinion on the kashmir issue uh, jawaharlal nehru and b r ambedkar they had a differences of opinion theek okay? hai so this is something that we can say i think uh, this was the last slide yes um we have a connecting pre session on application at 9 pm today and the topic of the discussion would be dr b r ambedkar and the constitution of india part 2 in which we will be talking about the constituent assembly uh, drafting committee uh, role of ambedkar and uh, the salient features of indian constitution right so here we have talked about the uh, creator we will now in the second part talk about the creation so we talked about dr b r ambedkar over here then we will later on talked about uh, talk about his creation that is the constitution of india in the second part right so on that note uh, i would like to you know declare that the class is over but yeah here once again let me tell you that holy sale is live 60% flat off is going on today is the last date use the code holy 60 and avail flat 60% flat off on any online classroom programs that is offered by byju's exam prep आपको ये भी बताना चाहूंगा कि मेरे बाई जो क्लासेस हैं ये आज रात को सात बजे से चालू होने वाले हैं मैं मेरी पहली क्लास आज एंशियंट इंडिया की ले ले लूंगा सेवन पी को तो बहुत सारे लोगों का ये कहना था कि सर बाई बैच आप जल्द से जल्द चालू कर दो तो वो हमने आपके लिए चालू कर दी है ये आज शाम आज शाम सात बजे से ये क्लासेस चालू हो जाएंगे तो जिन लोगों को बायोलिंग क्लास अटेंड करनी है प्लीज आप बायोलिंग क्लास को भी आइए उसके लिए आपको लेना पड़ेगा पेड सब्सक्रिप्शन जिसके लिए आज आपके पास बहुत ही सुनहरा मौका है प्लीज इसको आप जाने मत दीजिएगा प्लीज दैट्स एन अम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू यू ऑल इफ यू हैव नॉट डाउनलोडेड द एप्लीकेशन हेयर इज द क्यू कोड टू डाउनलोड द सेम ठीक है इफ यू यू नो डाउनलोड द एप्लीकेशन एंड परचेज आर सब्सक्रिप्शन these all are the things that you get these are the special features and the highlights of our offering for ugc net preparation program jahan pe aapko extended live sessions milte hain comprehensive study notes milte hain regular quizzes bhi hoti hain subject test hote hain jo ki after you know one particular section we take sectional progress test as well right test series jo hai aapko ugc net pattern ke upar milti hai previous year question paper discussion in depth hota hai doubt clearance uh, doubt resolution 24 into 7 milta hai so i think this holy sale it has brought to you uh, by bajaj exam prep and we are providing you 60% flat off it's a great opportunity before i end this particular live stream let me also appeal to you to join our telegram channel by scanning the qr code that you can see on the screen the same goes with our whatsapp group please join whatsapp group of bajaj ugc net history by scanning the qr code Also, you can send me any doubts that you may have on Yogesh underscore Lahankar. That is my Telegram handle. So you can send me any doubts that you might have about, you know, paper two especially, or any other doubt that you may have uh, about UGC net, and I'll be happy to help you. Thank you very much, everyone. I shall see you in my paid class now after some time. Yeah. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. I shall see you in my paid class, 3 p.m. Thank you and bye bye.